Time Series Insight is a fantastic service that will allow you to navigate through your data. It's getting a lot of fantastic new features that Chandrika is coming on the IT Show to uh, introduce today, just for you. Hi everyone, this is the Internet of Things show. I'm Olivier, your host, and today I have Shandrika with me. Thanks for coming, Shandrika. Thank you, Olivier, for having me. Oh, yeah, so today you are here to give us an update on Time Series Insights. What's mm -hmm. going on, all the new features that are coming to the service, uh, everything you can do with that and you will be able to do. That's right. Uh, but before we jump into that, people want to know you. So who are you, what are you doing at Microsoft? Yeah, I am uh, Chandrika Shankar Narayan, and I am the product leader for um, IoT analytics inside of Azure IoT team. And the showcase product we have, showcase technology we have in that space is called Azure Time Series Insights. Awesome. So Time Series Insights, what is it exactly? Can you give us an, a like, quick introduction of what it is for and what are people using it for? Yeah. Um, Azure Time Series Insights has been is a cloud service, Azure service, that's been in market for close to a year now. Okay. Um, Time Series Insights um, essentially helps customers do um, IoT analytics over warm data, so interactive data exploration mm -hmm. over warm data up to 400 dates. Um, the customers span uh, all market segments um, in industrial IoT, mm -hmm. um, manufacturing, automotive, energy, oil and gas, utility, uh, spaces, etc. Mm -hmm. So we've gotten a lot of great feedback in the last one year that we've been in market. Okay, and as far as I understand it, well, I understand it because I know it, but yeah. um, it, it's a combination of an explorer, which is like you have an experience in the browser and so on, and a set of, of libraries that you can actually embed the data and, and the various analytics you extract from TSI into your own application, right? Yeah, yeah, let me break that down. So Time Series Insights uh, primarily is a platform as a service offering. So. We have an ingestion pipeline, mm -hmm. um, a storage layer for storing warm data, okay. and a distributed query engine for querying that data very quickly with very low latencies to get insights over billions of uh, events coming to our pipeline in seconds. Okay. Um, we offer an app, a complementary app, on top of our PaaS platform, mm -hmm. which is called the TSI Explorer. Okay. That's the visualization capability that lets you visualize these events, do slicing and dicing of events, and get insights very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, we also offer an API on top of our query engine okay. that customers can use to build their own apps. Okay. Visual, visualize their own apps. Yeah. Perfect. That's a good, good introduction. Good overview. I yeah. was, I was actually like seeing it from the client's perspective, right? That's like, right. Well, yeah, yes. You're perfectly right to reestablish that. Yeah. So, what are the customers saying about it? What is, what is missing? What is it that we are working on and adding to the service yeah. that customers need today? Yeah. So, um, the product has been in market for about a year now, mm -hmm. and we've had a lot of success with customers. Uh, it's been growing very well. Uh, we've learned a lot from our customers. What we've learned is the IoT landscape um, includes customers who do some amount of data exploration, mm -hmm. which is what the tool yeah. is, uh, yeah. the technology is for, uh, for use cases where they don't know the shape of their data. Okay. Uh, but also spend a lot of time doing operational analysis mm -hmm. when they can explicitly model their data. They know the shape of their data, they can explicitly model their data, and can ask very specific questions that are specific to the assets or tags or, or um, devices and sensors that they're managing. Yeah, because um, a sensor is, for them is not just a sensor. It could be a sensor in a room. That's right. And a particular room they want to inspect versus exactly. just the sensor itself. Exactly. In the context of where the sensor is and in the context of where it is along with other devices where they want to drive operational efficiency in their organization. Okay. So um, the, the second part of it, which is op driving operational efficiency, is very key for what IoT customers are doing today to move to their, you know, sort of, sort of uh, have their digit digital revolution mm -hmm. uh, move forward faster. Yeah, yeah. So in that effort, people, uh, you know, a lot of customers are trying to move their data from on-premises to the cloud, for one, and then try to leverage cloud services, in our case, Azure services, yeah. to be able to do exactly this. Mm -hmm. um, so we see that our landscape is um, certainly about data exploration, where you don't know the shape of your data. Yeah. Uh, but it's also largely about operational analysis once you know the shape of your data. That makes sense. Um, and um, I hear about also long-term storage. You were saying that TSI in its first iteration uh, keeps data for, what, 400 days? Mm -hmm. Some industries actually require to have older data That's to right. like to analyze older data as well to That's create right. models that are based on, on on older data as well. Yep. Uh, so, are we doing something in that area as well? Yeah. So, this is exactly the space we want to um, go into. So, let me just build out yep. the slide that sort of 
depicts what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We talked about what um, ad hoc data, data exploration is. Um, operational analysis, what is it exactly? Uh, it's three things. It's many of the things you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. One is people want to be able to analyze decades worth of data. Yep. Certainly they want to look at fresh data as it's streaming in from the devices and sensors, but they also want to be able to compare and contrast with data from two years ago, from five years yep. ago. Yep. Do golden batch analysis, mm -hmm. do um, machine learning models, et yep. cetera, and be able to learn from it so that they can move forward in their process efficiency. Mm -hmm. um, that's one big thing, so yep. decades worth of data. Historize the data and get quick analytics over the history, historized data. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, customers model their environment, their, their uh, data, and they want to be able to contextualize the raw telemetry that's coming from sensors mm -hmm. with this model data. Okay. Um, and then be able to query, because now they know the shape of their data, be able mm -hmm. to query uh, data based on devices or assets, right? And that contextualized queries gives them the ability to do operational, um, drive operational efficiency. That's, okay. that's the second thing. The third big pillar of all this thing is, customers want to be able to do com computations or calculations as data streaming in, mm -hmm. so that they can convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. They want to be able to do maybe complex math to do aggregations yep. over that. Yep. Um, customers bring in their custom code or use cloud services to do this as mm -hmm. well. Um, that's another big pillar where you want the, you want the ability to either do scheduled calculations yeah, or yeah. calculations over streaming data. Those are three big pillars we've heard time and time again from customers yeah. doing industrial IoT analytics. So where Time Series Insights is moving is we think that we certainly have a lot of value in being able to provide data exploration capabilities, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but we also want to spend a bunch of time providing the capabilities that allows customers to do operational analysis over yes. model data. So we think of Time Series Insights as this big bucket of data exploration capabilities combined mm -hmm. with rich asset-based insights. That's where um, Time Series Insights is going. Okay. Um, I think you have a diagram coming next, yes. which is actually showing us a bit more in details what that's going to look like. Yeah. So uh, we have this new set of capabilities coming up very shortly here. We've yeah. been working pretty hard with a bunch of private preview customers yeah. that have given us a lot of great feedback and we've had a lot of great learnings. So essentially we're taking the existing capabilities mm -hmm. as they are and adding yeah some enhanced set of capabilities yeah. to support this full gamut of data exploration mm. and operational analysis. So we keep our warm storage capability. Okay. Uh, we add to our ingestion pi pipeline the ability to ingest data and store into cold storage. Okay. Uh, and we're building it on top of Azure Blob, which mm -hmm. gives us a lot of advantages already because um, we have cold storage capability by default, DR by default, it's a cloud service okay. that gives us all that benefit. Mm -hmm. However, we're adding additional capabilities to be able to index and partition the data, okay. and we also ingest, obviously, ingest and upload model data. So we're gonna, we're, we store that data and join that data at query time to provide rich asset-based insights. Oh, That's see. the capability we're adding. And of course, what that means also that is that our u user experience, which is the TSI Explorer experience, yeah. gets significantly enhanced to support mm -hmm. not just data exploration capabilities, yeah. but also uh, asset-based query yes. experiences as well. That makes sense. Yeah. You're gonna have to show me some of that. Absolutely. Yes. So, let me uh, switch out and show you some, uh, some demos here. So uh, this is the new um, time series or updated mm -hmm. or enhanced time series insights um, experience. Okay. What we have is certainly we want to be able to allow customers to do data exploration yep. like they are doing today. Mm -hmm. So we'll provide them the capability to do, and I'll switch out to a, a separate browser simply because these are bits that are still being cooked, yeah. um, and I'll make sure that I can um, showcase all the capabilities. So, so these are real bits, though. Real it's bits not, that are. It's not a screen capture. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> so people are used to using um, Time Series Insights Explorer today, where yeah. they can do all sorts of uh, slicing and dicing of data. Mm -hmm. uh, they can do timeline views. They can split by and get you know provide yeah. specific yeah. predicates yeah. for for capturing that data mm -hmm. and visualize all of the, all of this. All of this comes in into the enhanced experience. Okay. Um, what we're adding into the enhanced experience is the ability to look at asset-based insights. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is we're, we're going to provide all the environments that are available to you, including the environments that you already have working. Okay. Um, so I'm going to close this out and say that, show that we actually have two separate views in the, mm -hmm. in the new world. Okay. Because we're allowing you to model your data, mm -hmm. we want to be able to give you the ability to either upload your models into TSI, okay. into Time Series Insights, or edit the models or create models inside of um, Time Series Insights. Okay. Um, and then once the model is created, you can analyze and get those rich uh, insights as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and the anal anal analyzing data means that now you're looking at not just flat uh, telemetry data, mm -hmm. but you're looking at hierarchies because you just modeled your, your yeah, environment, yeah, right? Totally, yeah, totally. So here what I, what I have is I have a um, um, fictitious 
uh, wind farm yep. uh, that we have. Um, it's not your own one. Uh, not my <laughs> own one. Not quite that <laughs> rich yet. That'd but be it, cool, though. <laughs> yes. Um, so here's a wind farm, and it has a bunch of um, uh, wind turbine, uh, wind mm -hmm. plants. Yep. And then each of these have uh, multiple different sensors with multiple mm -hmm. different measurements. Yep. So you see the hierarchy yep. already here. What I can easily do is search these instances and look for, say, power, and you know, it, um, power probably doesn't exist. Let's actually quickly look in here and see uh, what sorts of things exist in here. Like um, I have a generator system. system. Yep. I have a pitch system. Uh, if I looked at active power, I should have been able to uh, arrive at one of these. As you can see, a uh, bunch, of, bunch of search results come up. Yep. It's fairly easy to do search um, mm -hmm. on this data. I see, yeah. um, and then I can look at um, the actual data that's coming through, which mm -hmm. is model data, and we call it time series models, and these are actually time series themselves. Okay. And so I'm going to click on one of them and say, hey, show me the average value on the chart. So I'm going to plot that on the chart. What I can do is compare and contrast this against other uh, time series that I'm looking at and yep. be able to draw, compare, compare, compare and contrast uh, to do event, event correlation, anomaly detection, mm -hmm. uh, and all that sort of stuff. Okay. So there's some cool capabilities that we have in the user experience that we've added um, to be able to do things like I want to change my time window that I want to show this, those events in. So you okay. have a calendar control that allows you to change the time span. Mm -hmm. um, you also have the ability to zoom in and zoom out. I can zoom in uh, into these events, zoom out of these events. Okay. Um, and I can also do things like, um, uh, once this restores, the ability to drop a marker. So if I say mm. there are some spikes happening at a certain point in time, yeah, yeah. I can drop a marker uh, in that spot and say, OK, I want to be able to compare that uh, I want to drop another marker. Oh, that didn't quite oh, stick. Missed. Drop a marker. There we go. Um, and then I, have, I can drop another marker to say, OK, what happened between this time and this time? And I want to be able to correlate between these two uh, uh, time windows. I want to be able to look, at, look across all of these time series yep. and look at the values across them and do compare and contrast, That's that sort of stuff. Super intuitive, yeah. graphic interface, and so on. Love it. Yeah, it's very typical of if you look at industrial IoT solutions and applications yep. that they use, these are very typical mm -hmm. capabilities that customers want. And this adds a lot of richness to how you analyze data that are timestamp data, time series yep. data and get rich insights out of it. Yeah. So all these new features for Time Series Insights are actually available right now. Mm -hmm. They are in public preview. That's right. We expect people to go try them out. Um, we would expect them also to start tying up into Azure Digital Twins and other IoT-related services in Azure, right? Absolutely. Over time, as we develop these capabilities for Time Series Insights uh, platform as a service offering and the application, mm -hmm. we, will, we will be working with the Digital twin, Twins team to ensure yeah. that we can extract the twin, digital twin data in, yeah. and inform our Time Series model from the digital twin data such that if you're using Digital Twin yeah. in conjunction with Time Series Insights, Everything your scenarios, together. your solutions just light up. Yeah. Awesome. Well, so people just have to try it out, Absolutely. provide feedback, and uh, come back to the IoT show to learn more soon. Thanks, Jacob, for coming. Thank you. And thanks for watching, guys, and I hope to see you soon.